session. So, okay, what's a file resource? Uh, a file resource is uh, a resource that we can download uh, uh, through the API. And it has a, a file. Uh, now uh, we only support uh, images in the SDK, but in the future we will try to support all type of files. So let's go. Uh, the SDK uh, now offer a, a module, which is the file resource module, and also two helpers. It's are the file resource directory helper which uh, we'll talk about later, and the file resize helper. Uh, this will be used to resize the images. Uh, okay, so the workflow of uh, when we want to upload and download images will be something like that. So first of all, uh, we download the metadata and the file resources. So when we download the metadata, we can ask the SDK just if we want, but if your application is gonna use images, uh, you will be able to, through the SDK, ask for the file resources that are uh, associated to your data. So also uh, after that, uh, we can take pictures and resize them. Uh, and then uh, we will take these pictures, these files, and we'll add them uh, with an SDK repository in the file resource module that with handle the state, uh, uh, the SDK will put uh, the, the state of the file to, to post. And next time we sync the data, we will upload this picture. So this process uh, can be a bit slow uh, if there is like a many pictures or your connection is not like really, really good. Uh, but the SDK will know when a file is uh, uploaded or not. So don't worry about that. Uh, okay. So now we enter the file resources module and we call the method download. This will, uh, we will call this method after the metadata and data download. And then what will the SDK download? Well, it will download all track entity attribute values and track entity data values. So for tracker and for data elements, whose uh, track entity attribute type and data element type are image type. So in the when you enter to maintenance, uh, you can uh, select uh, the type of each attribute or data element. So if you select image type and you have those attributes in the in your database, uh, the SDK will download all the images, so all the file resources that has not been previously downloaded. Okay. So it's a bit tricky, but it's just like all the attributes, the type uh, image and all the data values of type image. So uh, after that, we also have in the same file resource module, uh, file resources, uh, which is another repository uh, as all that we have seen. Uh, in this repository, you can get the files uh, so you can filter and that will be used to present your pictures. Okay, uh, when you want to uh, add a new file source to the SDK in order to upload it, uh, you will have to use the add method here and pass the file. So this method will return the UID of the file resource that we are creating. And this UID uh, will be used to update the track entity attribute value or the data value associated with the file. So you will have to go to this attribute value uh, for this track entity instance, for example, and set this UID. So you will link the file and this attribute 
And when you want to show the image, you will just have to, uh, to see if the track entity attribute value type is the type image and then present it in that way. Uh, for the file resources upload, uh, well, you have to go again to the collection repository of the file resources and just call the upload method. It's very easy, so you just, just have to do that. Um, it will trigger a series of calls and all the files will be shared into the server. So after this call, uh, you will, uh, so the SDK will provide you a um, new UID of this file resource. That means that when you create a, a file resource, you get a provisional UID, but when you upload it to the server, the server will rename this UID and get another one, a new one. And you will get that one and you uh, and the SDK will automatically rename all the UIDs. So, uh, the SDK will look for the tag entity attribute values and the tag entity that uh, values and will update these UIDs. So you don't have to do anything, but just you have to, to know that uh, it could happen that you have a uh, old UID and then uh, it doesn't work anymore. So you will have the new uh, UID, you have to take care of that. So uh, this is a helper that we have in the in the SDK. It's the file resizer helper, and it has a a method that uh, is a resize file that takes a file. Uh, it only takes a file of type images. If it's not an image, it will throw an exception. But if you if uh, pass a file, you will be able to resize the image to those, uh, to small, medium, and large. Uh, you have to do that before upload uh, the images to the to a server, because if not, you can uh, pass like really, really big uh, files. Um, probably you won't, uh, you, you won't want to do that because it could, uh, it could be like that when you try to upload the the images, it takes like really too long, or you need a lot of space for for these images. So always resize the, resize the file. Don't forget that. And the other helper for the file resources is the file resource directory helper. Uh, and this helper will help you uh, with the file directories. So uh, it, they have uh, methods uh, that will point you to the directories where you have all the files. Uh, the SDK resources is one of the directories and there is where the SDK saves the files associated with the file resources. So there is where actually the files will be. But we also have another file, another directory, so another folder uh, where you have to work always before uh, saving the, the file resources. So here uh, is the place where all the files that are not, that are, are volatile, for example, the camera photos or files that you want to resize later. Uh, well, this is the place for that. And this is the place for that because uh, maybe you want to have like a really tidy uh, file resource directory here where you only have the, the actual uh, resources uh, of the pictures. And here you can have like all the other things. You have to take care because other applications in Android uh, or even the, the the user can delete these files. Uh, so you have to uh, tie this catch a resource like proactively. You have to clean when you uh, create a picture and you put it there, you have to always remove this picture after you 
have moved this picture to the SDK resources directory. So we are going to do an exercise about uh, this thing. So don't worry, we are uh, we will be able to understand all that thing, what the image is. So now we have uh, this exercise. Um, I think it's going to be a really cool exercise because it's not just about data. We are working with images, and that's kind of fun in our world. So OK, what is what we are going to do? I want to try to uh, take a picture and save this picture as the image state. So uh, now the we have a track entity instance with the type person, which has the name, which has the last name, but also have a picture. So we are going to try to set this picture and create a, a new file using the directory helper uh, to get the cache file to use the to sorry to store the temporary file the temporary picture when you take the picture and after that uh, we're gonna use this picture and we are gonna use the file resizer helper we're gonna resize the picture and after that we are gonna save the the picture with the in the SDK in the correct folder. So let's go. Um, you're gonna see the exercise. Uh, first of all, uh, we have the initial branch here, which is the exercise nine file resources. And this is the the exercise class. We are gonna use again the code executor activity as before. Uh, this exercise uh, is not that uh, difficult, so I, I hope you all can uh, solve it kind of quick. So I'm going to uh, see you how it looks like. So you have to go to the code executor activity here. And here, the first part of the exercise is just a line uh, where you have to use the file resource directory helper and get uh, the cage resource directory. So you have to create a new file. So you have to use the new file and then use the, the directory helper. So if you come here to file uh, in the constructor, uh, uh, you see that you have to pass the parent, which is the file, and the string for the for the path. So you have to pass the path, and you for that you will use this directory helper. And after that, uh, you are gonna have to insert the file to an attribute. And here are all the instructions, and you can do it here after this line. So you are going to use this track entity instance that use the, this method that is like the same that we have done before. So it just create a track entity instance and give it to you. And then this method is this other one that you just created. So first of all, you have to fill this one and then you will get the file. So after that, uh, you have to take care uh, about the file, you have to check if the picture exists. And if it exists, resize them. Then use the module, uh, the file resource module to add the file. Um, after that, you have to add the resource to an attribute. And you can use the attribute uh, helper, which is this class that we have here. You can call the TA match and you will get the UID of the attribute, OK? So you will have to do something like that. Attribute helper dot the image. And then you pass the track into the instance, and you will get the, the attribute of this day uh, for the picture. After that, you have to come here, come to the code execute, executor, execute the code, and then you can go to 
your drag entity instances. And you will see here another, a new drag entity instance with a picture just like this one. So first of all, do you have any questions? Okay, I think there's no, no questions now. So, okay. Uh, well, uh, so now we are gonna take a bit about tracker data upload and error management. So all the data that today we have been learning how to create, we're gonna try to upload it. So we're gonna talk about that upload, like a, a bulk upload then granular sync where we are gonna just upload granular data and then the error management. So first of all, uh, the track entity instance and event repositories here, we have an upload method. Uh, and this method will be used uh, to upload track entity instances and events without registration. Also, uh, you can use some filters to filter in this track entity instances uploads just to upload the track entity instances or events that you want. Also, as I remember, the instances whose state is different uh, to post or to update, they are not going to be updated. So uh, as I remember, I just put here this uh, slide from yesterday. So, if you want to call upload and you want these drag entities to be uploaded, they have uh, to have uh, these two states. If they are sync, they are not going to be uploaded. Also, if they have error or warnings, they are not to be uploaded either. So you have to make some changes here to get uh, to change the state to, to update, then uh, you will be able to upload the data again. So what happened when you update the data? So if you have a method, uh, if the data is to post, to update, uh, and you have a success when you update the data, then they are gonna change to sync. If it is uh, to delete and you success, then you are gonna delete the entity in your device. So you will be, it won't be into your device anymore. But if you have an error and is any of these three states, you're gonna get an error or a warning. Depends of the type of error you are getting. So for the granular thing, uh, you can add the filters that you want, but uh, one of the typical filters that you have is filtering by the UID. So if you filter by the UID and then you call the upload method, you are gonna uh, filter a, um, a concretely a track entity instance. Uh, so you can add more filters if you want. And for the conflict resolution, because maybe if when you try to uh, upload some data, you can uh, get an error from the server and in case, in case there is any error in the upload, the SDK will make two things. We'll create a record in the table track entity import conflict, but it also will mark the TI or the enrollments or the events with the errors or the warnings. So we we'll change the state of these entities. And also the track entity import conflicts for a TI or an event are removed if uh, then you create a successful sync of this element. So maybe you have some track entity import conflicts and they're still there, but you make some changes and then you update these uh, elements again and they are succeed uh, in this updated. So the SDK will remove the track entity import conflicts. So here is a, an example of how the SDK uh, 
uh, will propagate upwards the response. You have this TI with an enrollment and also with an event. All of them are from the TI. And you upload this whole thing to the, to the server. So then the server responds and okay, the TI uh, wasn't, uh, uh, didn't have any conflict. So, okay, then we read the enrollment uh, response of the server. And if it is a success, we'll mark the enrollment again as a success. So a sync. But if we check the event, and for example, we find some errors in the event, then we will mark again the enrollment and the TI with an error. So if the TI uh, that has an event has an error, at the end, we'll have an error too, and the enrollment will mark with an error. So the states of the TI, the enrollment, and event will be error. In case that there is a warning, it will be the same, but with warnings. Uh, the tracker import conflict is an object that will help you to, to see where the conflicts are. So each uh, object will have a conflict, with the, which is the conflict description, the UID of the order, the UID of the tracking instance, the UID of the enrollment, the UID of the event, all of them, if any. So if there is not a tracking instance or enrollment in your post, that they will they wouldn't be here. You will find another. Also for the tag entity attribute or that uh, data element uh, UID. The table reference is if, for example, if it is a, T, a TI or it's an enrollment or it's an event, it will be marked here. Also, you will have an error code that um, the SDK will uh, write here. The status, if it's a warning or an error, the created date or the description. And um, with the description of the conflict and uh, for example, in this case, the data element, you can try to uh, find the data element with the error and mark it in the form, for example. And um, also here you, you can use the description to see what's happening here. Okay, that's all the theoretical part. And now we are going to go with uh, simple exercises uh, about this. So what we have to do is implement the upload logic. Uh, so there's two exercises. The first of them is a bulk upload, where you have to trigger the upload for targeted instances, events, aggregated data, and file resources. So the, all the, the data that we have. And we can use Flipper to inspect the post call and see that we are really uh, uploading all the files. So you can make some changes uh, in a track entity instance or an event or in aggregated data, even some resource, uh, file resources, and then try to inspect the post and see that they are uploading. So you can, after that, log in, in the in our URL and check that the data that you have up uploaded have been created in the in the server. For that, you have this initial branch here, which is the exercise 10 a bulk data upload, and the exercise classes in this case is only the main activity. For the second exercise, we just want to upload one single TI. So you are gonna try to use the upload uh, method, which is in the drag entity instance repository, and then filter by UID. Also, you can use Flipper and check that the drag uh, entity instance has been uh, created and upload. For that exercise, you have uh, all the information in uh, about here. Uh, so it's the the branch exercise 10, granular sync, and the brand and the exercise is here. Uh, I just repost this uh, first branch, the exercise 10A. So if you in case you didn't find this one, you just have to go and fetch the data. So you can come here, you sell those git and fetch again. If you fetch again, 
you will find here the, the bulk data branch. So after that, I'm gonna show you a bit in the exercise, the main activity. So here, uh, the exercise is to change this uh, observable and uh, make the calls here. Also, you can concat concatenate these calls using concat with, okay? And for the other exercise, uh, you will have to switch the branch and go to the uh, the instance adapter. So I'm gonna do that now. Sorry. Uh, I think it's, it's 10B. Oh, it's 10B. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I was uh, freaking out. Uh, then is this one? No. The last one. And B here. <laughs> so, so sorry. Uh, so it's in the track entity instance adapter, I think. Yeah. So here is the exercise. So you have to change this observable and use this uh, track entity instance UID to filter the upload in the tracking data instance uh, repository. This one is like very, very simple. The other one could take five minutes maximum. So uh, we are gonna leave you uh, 20 minutes for both exercises. Um, if you get stuck with the branch thing, just tell me and I will help you to find this branch. Um, yeah, do you have any question? <laughs>